Lesson 6.3 is about indirect proof. So up until this point, we've been using direct proofs. The two-column proofs are direct proofs. That's where we try to prove the conclusion is true directly. Well, sometimes those are kind of tough, and uh, we find it easier to use an indirect proof, which is actually part of the way that we um, reason in everyday life. Uh, and what we do in an indirect proof is we try to prove that the opposite of the conclusion is false. <laughs> so if we conclude, can, can find that the opposite of the conclusion is false, then the conclusion must be true indirectly. Okay, so there's three or four basic steps of an indirect proof. Um, and the first one, step one, is that we're going to assume temporarily that the conclusion that we want to prove is false. So we want to temporarily assume that it is not true. Then what we do is we go to our evidence and we reason logically until we can find a contradiction of uh, one of the given statements, one of the known facts. And when we find that contradiction, we have to state it. And actually, you can combine steps two and three. Once you've found the contradiction, you state it. You say this contradicts the given information or the given fact. Uh, therefore, the last step is therefore, um, the original conclusion must be true because we found a contradiction to the opposite um, of the conclusion, which was we assumed the opposite in uh, our step, first step. So this is easiest to understand when we use an example. So here we go with an example. Um, so you say that my dog, Rex, dug a hole in your yard on July 15th. Well, I'm going to prove that Rex did not dig a hole in your yard. So that's what I'm trying to prove. That's the conclusion I want to prove. So step one, remember this is where we temporarily assume that the conclusion I want to prove is false. So let's temporarily assume that Rex did dig a hole in your yard on July 15th. Okay, now the next part is where I'm going to reason logically until I can show a contradiction uh, that's going to disprove that. So if Rex dug a hole in your yard, he would have had to have been in your yard. He would have had to have been in your yard on July 15th. But this contradicts the fact that actually Rex was in the kennel from July 14th to 17th, and I have the bills that show that this is true. And now the last step I say, well, we've contradicted this temporary assumption right up here, so thus our uh, assumption is false. And therefore, Rex did not dig a hole in your backyard. So I went indirectly and proved uh, what I wanted to prove in the first place. So that's a little example. I'll show you an example that uses some geometry. Okay, so here's a little geometric example. We have two lines, A and B, that are both cut by transversal T. And I have three angles measured there, shown. And um, the given statement is that, and we have to always accept the given as fact. That's very important in these um, indirect proofs. We have to assume that the given is true. Okay, so the given is that angle one does not equal angle two, those two measures. What we have to prove is that A, line A, is not parallel to line B. Okay, so our first step is assume temporarily that. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the opposite of what we're trying to prove. So we're going to temporarily assume that line A is parallel to line B. So that's step one. Okay, so step two is where we're going to reason logically until we reach a contradiction of the given. So I say, okay, well, if A is parallel to B, if so, then uh, angle one would have to be congruent or the same measure as angle three. Because why? Because those are corresponding angles. And those would have to be congruent. OK, and what else would have to be true? Well, uh, angle three would have to be congruent to angle two. And that's because the vertical angles are congruent. OK. And then it follows, lastly, if 1 is equal to 3 and 3 is equal to 2, that 
angle 1 would have to be congruent to angle 2 by substitution. Okay, then the third step is I say, well, I just said that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. This contradicts the given statement that is factual, that in fact, measure of angle 1 is not congruent to the measure of angle 2. And then the last step is uh, where we say, okay, therefore, the original assumption must be false. In other words, the assumption that A was parallel to B is false, proving that, in fact, A is not parallel to B. So we'll put a line through that. It's not parallel to line B. And that's the basic four-step plan for doing an indirect proof. And that's it.